Hello, this is Eric Bobro, and in this section we'll look at some troubleshooting tips and additional notes related to the first module of the Quick Start course. Now, perhaps on screen your version of ARCHICAD doesn't look quite the same as what I've been doing, and you may have some questions about uh, how to um, turn things on or off or adjust them. So we'll just look at a couple of quick things that may um, have uh, caused you some confusion. Uh, for example, there is the status bar down below here. You'll see it says enter first node of polywall. That means that when I click, it's going to be starting a series of walls. And you see it now says down below enter next node of polywall. And I will click again and, you know, click a series of them. And when I finish the last one, I can either click on the same point a second time, in other words, double-click the last point, or I can right-click and say OK and finish that up. Um, now the uh, uh, status bar here will switch when I uh, go to the arrow tool. It'll say click an element or draw a selection area, so it's giving me some guidance. Now if you don't have a status bar visible on your screen, perhaps it's been closed. I'll just close it here by clicking the little red button in the, in the uh, left side. To get it back, I go to the Window menu and Toolbars, I'm sorry, Window Palettes and Status Bar. So this is a, considered a floating palette and you can turn it on or off using this option, Window Palettes Status Bar. Now if your screen looks significantly different than what you see here, perhaps your entire work environment uh, is uh, set up differently, and you may need to uh, for to be able to follow the training here more easily. You may need to go to your work environment options, work environment, and in the work environment, when I bring up that dialog box, you'll see that there is something called palette schemes. And palette schemes, if I uh, look, it may have only just two or three items here, but if I go to standard palettes and apply scheme, then it will tell me that it's going to apply it, and it's going to move all of the um, palettes, such as uh, the uh, status bar and the toolbar, into uh, the position that Graphisoft ships the software with. So you can see things have readjusted just a little bit, uh, but that will put your ARCHICAD into a certain standard configuration. Um, now in fact, you could go under the Options Work Environment here, and instead of going down to the Palette Schemes, you could look at the entire work environment. And when you're first starting to work with ARCHICAD, you may want to just make sure that it's set up for the standard profile for whatever version, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or Start Edition, SE, etc. So just go to the Work Environment Profiles, Standard Profile, Apply Schemes of Profile, and just click on the Apply button and say OK. And we didn't see any real change visually, but it did change some of the preference settings um, that uh, will put your uh, session in ARCHICAD into uh, a reliable, uh, let's say, copy of what I'm working with. Now, in terms of moving palettes around, you can, if your screen is small or large, you can move them you can grab the navigator here, for example, and you can stretch it um, out to whatever size you want um, and then perhaps put it in towards the corner. If you um, make your navigator off to the exactly touching the side here, then when you click on the either the green plus sign on the Mac or the, the um, restore uh, button for Windows, it will um, make sure that it fits precisely between these palettes, um, and therefore when um, you won't have any part of it sticking behind and being hidden by another palette. Uh, so this green button here, or the zoom that would be in the upper right, the um, restore, uh, will uh, allow you to resize it automatically, or of course you can manually grab the bottom right, or if you're on Windows you can grab any side and resize this, and you'll notice that the uh, uh, 3D window is actually sitting behind that, and it can be resized as well. 
So those are a few little tips um, here. I could resize this manually, or again, I can click on the green button here, and you'll see how it jumps to take up the available space. So the second thing I wanted to uh, talk about is in terms of the work environment, in some versions of ARCHICAD, if we're creating a series of elements um, like I did earlier, they would be grouped. And we haven't, we aren't going to be looking at grouping quite yet as a training um, mechanism. But if I select a uh, single element, in some cases in ARCHICAD, it would select all of them. And then you may be frustrated trying to follow along with what I did where I deleted a single one. So let me show you where the group settings are. If you don't have this problem, you can ignore this next minute or two of training for now, but it will be useful for you at some point. So I'd suggest you watch it anyway. I'm going to draw a box around these elements and select them. And I will go to the Edit menu. There is a sub-menu called Grouping and a command called Group. So if these are grouped, you'll see the handles or grips change their color and uh, configuration. Now I'll click away from everything to deselect. And now when I just click to select a single item, you'll notice it has selected all of them as if they were one element, but they're actually a group. Now that, of course, would mean I can't delete just a single wall here. Um, it actually limits the editing capabilities, although I can drag them as a whole into a new position, which of course is very useful in many cases. Now, even if they are a group, I can use a button up here in the um, toolbox that says Suspend Groups. This command here is also available under the Edit menu, Grouping, and you'll see Suspend Groups now has a checkbox. So you can suspend groups using either the button or this command. Now, with groups suspended, when I select this wall, the handles indicate it's part of a group because it has the round uh, hollow handles, but it's only selecting that one element. And that, of course, does allow me to then delete by hitting the delete key. And I can proceed with what I had done before. And I'll shift click to select these two and intersect. So if your ARCHICAD is set up with a command under the grouping menu that says auto group, and in some versions of ARCHICAD, this was turned on by default. With auto group turned on and suspend groups not turned on, then you might have tried to do something similar to what I did, like this. And even without trying to group them, when I select this, they're already a group because auto group says whether you draw a series of walls like this or perhaps a box of walls like this, when these are done with one of those methods, they're all going to be grouped together. So with auto group, this will automatically um, connect all of these elements into a single uh, group without you having to do it. And it can be useful, but Graphisoft, I think, decided at a certain point that auto group actually was confusing to people until you really wanted it. So they, in later versions, turned that off as the default. But of course, you can turn it on or off as you wish. The main thing to realize is if it is turned on, you can turn it off. And if things are grouped and you want to modify an individual element, you can suspend groups, which again is available from this checkbox here. You see the two rectangles and by clicking it, it's now um, activated, which means I can select an individual element. When this is clicked the other way, then when any one or more elements of a group are selected, they will all be selected. So suspend groups here is a very important thing to understand if you're finding that you're selecting one thing and it's selecting multiple ones. If that's not what you want, then try suspending groups. Now, um, a few other things just for troubleshooting. Uh, if you um, have, if you're in the middle of doing something and you realize you don't want to complete that action, you can hit the escape key. So hitting the escape key, that key in the upper left, 
will cancel that action. Um, you can also right-click and say cancel. So right-clicking will work in most cases to give you an option um, that uh, includes cancel. Now, if you're on a Mac and you have a single button mouse or you're on a laptop um, and you don't have a right click button um, accessible, then you can use the control key on the Mac. So the Mac has the command key with the little uh, clover leaf or four circles um, uh, arrayed. That command or Apple key uh, gives you shortcuts. Um, but then near, near it, you would have the Option key and the Control key. And by pressing down the Control key and just doing a standard mouse button, you see when I press down the Control key, it changes my cursor to show a little tiny context menu, and then a normal click of the mouse will bring up this context menu. So that's available if you um, need it on a Mac. Now, in general, the right-click button um, or control click will bring up a menu based on whatever is your context. Right now nothing is selected so there are some general things that allow me to navigate or refresh the screen or paste in. If I have something selected, and I'll just select this, when I right click you'll see that there are different options such as being able to move the elements I've got selected. So the right click menu is uh, very useful and we'll repeatedly refer to it during the course of um, the Quick Start course and as you work with ARCHICAD. Now, um, so the escape key is very powerful because it will not only cancel an operation like drawing something you don't want to draw or dragging or moving or changing something that you don't want, it will also, um, when I hit the escape key and nothing is currently active, it'll switch from, say, the wall tool to the arrow tool. So when you want to draw, you'll switch to one of the tools for drawing. And when you want to select, often you'll uh, want to be in the arrow tool. So hitting the escape key is a great shortcut just to jump back to the arrow tool. So it will cancel an operation in process. It'll actually deselect elements that are selected. So if I have some elements selected and I hit the escape key, it'll deselect them. and it will also, um, with possibly a second or a third click, bring you back to the arrow tool. Now, um, the uh, if I am in a tool such as drawing the, uh, a wall um, here, let's switch here to draw a single wall. And notice that even in the middle of an operation, I can switch uh, what I'm doing. So I can say, no, I want to do a single wall, not a box. And you can see how that changes. Now I've just completed drawing a wall. Let's say that I wanted to um, make uh, some change to this wall. I can select it by holding down the shift key. Hold down the shift key, the same one you use for a capital letter um, on the keyboard, and click. So you'll notice that I'm still in the wall tool, but temporarily while I held down the shift key, it changed the cursor. You see now the cursor is an arrow. When I let go of the shift key, it goes back to being a crosshair, allowing me to either click outside to deselect or click to start a new wall. So if I do want to select things, I can just hold down the shift key, shift, click, shift, click, and that selected those two items. And of course, one of the options that we looked at earlier was the intersect. And so we can do that um, using the shift click there. So I think that uh, this concludes the um, extra points that I wanted to make to uh, help clarify some typical uh, questions that come up, some typical things that uh, may look different on your screen. Um, I think the final thing, I had this pulled down, so I actually had this a little longer to be able to see more things. You'll see that we can scroll through um, tools if there's not enough space. I'm working with a low resolution screen to make the um, recording as clean as possible for you to, to view. Uh, let me just show you a couple of other things about the palettes and then we'll finish up. Uh, this palette here is called the Quick Options and you'll see when I click on it again that it disappears. I'll click again and it comes up. So this Quick Options 
is one that we will use later on. And I normally have this the, below the navigator area. So I'll just bring this up and slip this underneath so I can resize it and move these around. Now on Mac and Windows, the snapping is slightly different. On Mac, um, elements will dock to each other or, or snap to each other um, so that if I grab the navigator, both of these move together. Whereas on Windows, they will dock and they'll snap to the sides of the screen. So they have slightly different behaviors. Um, but uh, on Windows, you can grab things on the sides. On Mac, you generally have to grab them by the bottom right or the top title bar in order to be able to move or resize them. So this concludes uh, the uh, module on troubleshooting and additional notes at the end of the first module of the Quick Start course. Thanks for watching.